Hi guys, it's Joe Tommaso from the 15 Minutes With podcast. Our show is geared toward helping to keep not only teens, but people in general out of our jails and prisons. Our show is unique in the fact that we use real inmates throughout the country and they explain not only about the cases that caused their incarceration, but why it's so important for people to stay out of prison and remain free. Speaking of free, have you heard about the newest and best way to put your podcast out there for the world to hear? Let me tell you about Anchor. Anchor is the easiest way to produce and distribute your ideas, your podcast, and the best part, it's free. There's even a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will even distribute your podcast for you so people can hear it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many other listening platforms. You can even make money from your podcast and there are no minimal amount of listeners required. Anchor is everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So what are you waiting for? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and get started. Hey everyone and welcome to this edition of the 15 Minutes with True Crime Podcast. I am Dr. Joe Tommaso, your host. Catherine Reed has spent more than half of her life in prison, 34, almost 35 years. She was 29 when she and her boyfriend, Vincent Bruce, committed their crimes, which consisted of both a string of armed robberies as well as several murders, causing the media to dub the pair a modern-day Bonnie and Clyde after Depression-era gangsters Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrows, who killed at least 13 people. In this segment, please listen as Kat, now 62 years old, looks back and describes her story in her own words. If you like this show and you'd like to see it continue and get better, please hit those like and subscribe buttons and leave us a comment. Also, please consider donating to paypal.me slash Joe Tommaso. That is paypal.me slash J-O-E-T-O-M-A-S-O. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, or if there's someone you might want us to try and interview, please email us at insidetherazorwire at gmail.com. Once again, that is insidetherazorwire at gmail.com, or you can snail mail us at P.O. Box 162, West Haven, Connecticut, 06516. And now, here is this edition of 15 Minutes With... Hello. This is Global Tell Link. You have a prepaid call from Catherine Reed. An inmate at the Central California Women's Facility, Chowchilla, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using Global Tell Link. Hey, Catherine, it's Hello? Joe. Hi. Hi. Before we start the interview, do you want to be called Catherine, Kathy, any, you know, you tell me. Oh, I just, everybody calls me Kat. Okay. I, I was going to ask that one too, but I didn't want to go that far. Okay. Uh, everybody calls me Kat. Okay, cool. Most the opposite. Okay, that'll work. All right. All right, so here we go. Can you please say your name and where you're calling from? Uh, yes, my name is Catherine Ann Reed, and I'm calling from the Central California Women's Facility. And what were you charged with? What were you actually sentenced for? And what is your sentence? Um, I was charged with three counts of murder, mm-hmm. three counts of attempted murder, um, uh, and uh, I think it was five counts of robbery. Mm-hmm. And I was actually sentenced to three life without parole, back-to-back, mm-hmm. life sentences, and five years, I think it was. Wow. How long have you been in prison for? Um, I've been in prison since 92, but I got locked up in 87. Okay. I actually did look your case up, you know, media-wise, and you tell me if I'm wrong or not, but uh, they quoted it something like it was Bonnie and Clyde type thing. Yes, sir. When you first walked into jail or prison, what did it feel like to you? What was the first thoughts that went to your head? Um, my first thought that went to my head when I walked into prison was I didn't want to get up and caught up in the prison politics and um, and and how I lived my lifestyle on the streets, selling drugs and all that stuff. Okay. I wanted to get away from all of that. So- this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded.
So I came into prison with the mindset that I was just going to observe. So you're just going to watch and, and get... Yeah, and then determine who I was safe to hang around with. I got gotcha. you. A lot of people have seen shows on TV like 60 Days In, Lock Up, Lock Up Raw, you know, those prison shows they have on these days. Yeah. The show, have you seen any of these? Yes, or, I've seen some of them. Okay, so you know they're pretty sanitized. They don't show what goes on. They may show a little bit, but they don't show what's really going on inside. Would you say more that prison, okay, not just where you're at now, but the whole prison system is more like a college campus or would you say that it's actually pretty dangerous at times? Um, I would say that prison's pretty dangerous at times. You have to watch out for the cops just like you do the inmates. Mm -hmm. And I know that going inside, one of the first things everybody pretty much gets told by the old timers is uh, don't gamble, don't stick your nose in anybody's business, don't snitch, basically keep to yourself and Definitely don't gossip. That's not about right. <laughs> um, yeah, that's not about right. A lot of the old timers, um, some of them told me some things. Mm. Like I told you, I kind of stayed back from people to watch. Right. With who? Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, You've been in prison for thirty-four or almost thirty-five years now. So you've seen the transition, which this is in the list of questions that I had, you know, gave everybody. You've seen the transition from the old time convict style prison to the inmate style. You get where I'm going with this? Yes, I do. Okay. So and it was also different in how the prison was set up also. Mm hmm. Would you say that the, it's actually gotten better on the inside or worse or is it still about the same? Um, it's actually gotten worse. Okay. Because you have a lot of youngsters who come in here and they have no respect. Mm -hmm. And it was all about respect. Yep. There's none of that anymore. And mm -hmm. it's the same thing with the officers. A lot of times the officers don't even respect each other. I know that with the younger crowd, too, um, they tend to be a little bit more, I'll call it fighty. Yeah. yeah uh, it, it's not, yeah, definitely not like the old days, that's for sure. And based on that, what would you say to a young person or a person in general who is on the outside and they're screwing up, they're getting into the system, they're definitely destined to go to jail or prison from what they're doing? What would you tell them? Well, first off, I'd let them know that this isn't, this isn't what you think it is. You know, it's hard, it's hard to live in here. Even if you come in here with the idea that you're going to try to stay out of trouble, sometimes that doesn't always happen. You know, you end up getting in trouble. I was, like I said, I came in with the attitude of watching first and not just jumping into cliques or uh, groups of people. Mm -hmm. But I would tell them, whatever, whichever way they're going, they need to turn, look at themselves, figure out what it is, pushing them in that direction. Mm -hmm. And like I always tell everybody, change your crowd. Change your crowd, you can change your life. Yeah, because I know sometimes, too, you'll hang around with people from certain areas or certain groups, and you got to put... <laughs> Yeah, it's like if you want to be part of the group, you got to put in work, and then you're looking at other charges down the road. Well, let me give you an example. I sold drugs when I was out there. Mm -hmm. And many times I watch people in the neighborhood get fresh way out of prison, and the first thing one of their friends say to them is, come on, let's go get high. Mm -hmm. And they haven't had any drugs for years. Now all of a sudden you're putting them back into that uh, mode of where they're stuck getting high again. Yeah, you're setting them up for relapse. Yep. Exactly. And so these are friends. They come right back to the same neighborhood, and they fall into the same trap. I mean, it happens a lot. I mean, a lot. A lot. Here's where I'm going to give over the mic to you for a little bit. Okay. I want you to tell me about you. Tell me your story. Okay. Tell me your story. Tell me how you wound up on the inside. It's all you. Okay. I'm just going to sit back. Okay. Well, first off, let me um, give you a little bit of background. My, mm -hmm. I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness. Mm -hmm. And when I got older, I strayed away from the religion. I thought I was missing something. Okay. You know, there, we have a strict code about how you live. And so I ended up marrying somebody who uh, wasn't in the faith. Mm -hmm. 
Um, he turned out to be very abusive, you know, and I couldn't, no matter what, even when I finally was able to leave him, I still couldn't get rid of him. Right. So I started hanging out with people that um, he was afraid of, mm -hmm. you know, but I should have been afraid of these people myself. <laughs> right, I got you. And I ended up, yeah, and then I ended up starting selling drugs to help take care of my kids because I was working. Mm -hmm. And it was still hard to, as a single parent with children, to try and survive. So I'm hanging out with these people. Plus, you have to hang out. You have to have some type of interaction with the gangs in the neighborhood if you want to sell drugs. Right, right. Run the neighborhood. You're not coming into their turf and doing no business without their approval. Right. So, and that's, I had a lot of interaction with gangs. I wasn't a gang member, but I knew them. Mm -hmm. So um, I started hanging out with these people. Right. So they asked me to do a favor. Mm -hmm. They wanted, they were trying to get a hold of these two guys, and it was a personal issue, mm -hmm. you know. And they, the two guys, they couldn't get close to the guys because guys didn't trust them. Right. But they knew I could. So they asked me to go to this guy's house. All they, I was supposed to do was go in, see if he was home, come out, let them know, and leave. Right. That was all I was supposed to do. Actually, I parked my car in front of a fire hydrant and left my person that I was not expecting to stay, obviously. Mm -hmm. I went to the house, and to be, and to be honest with you, mm -hmm. I had already... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. And to be honest with you, I had already set my mind that I really didn't want to be in the middle of all this. So mm -hmm. I would come out and tell them, hey, it ain't cool, don't go in there. So you were basically, you basically had a gut instinct that told you something was wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't going to, I was going to tell them it wasn't good to go in there, no matter who, who was in there. Yeah. But when I got in the house and the guy was there, he was on the telephone. Mm -hmm. And um, when I got in the house and I saw everybody was in there, I realized, oh, it really ain't cool in here. Right. So I went to the, I actually told the girl, it's an apartment building, mm -hmm. Told the girl to get up and come lock the door behind me. I said, I left my purse in the car, so come lock the door behind me. I wasn't planning on coming back. Yeah, yeah. And um, when she got up to behind me to go to the door, they were already at the door. They had gloves and guns in their hands. Mm -hmm. and I was stuck. Mm hmm Basically. So the shit jumped off yeah. right then and there. Right. But we ended up being in there all night. Because the other guy they were trying to get a hold of, they needed this one guy, Keith, mm -hmm. to get a hold of Gino. Right. And and so they could, they kept trying to get a hold of Gino, trying to get a hold, and Keith couldn't. You know, so at one point, uh, one of my co-defendants took me and Keith to Gino's house. He wasn't home, so we came back. Then a few hours later, we went back again, and he still wasn't home. But we went to a payphone, and my co-defendant called my other co-defendant and said, hey, we're going to go check one more time, and if not, then we'll come back. Mm -hmm. But when we went back to the house, he was just pulling up. Okay. And so when we got to the house, um, he, he had Keith ring the doorbell. He let Gino get in the house. He had Keith ring the doorbell mm -hmm. so that Keith wouldn't see him. Right. And then... I mean, Gino wouldn't see him. And then when we went in the house, um, he tied up Keith mm -hmm. and gagged him. Mm -hmm. And then he said uh, he was going to take Gino upstairs to talk to him. Mm -hmm. And we heard some bumping around up there. We didn't know what was going on. Right. You know? And the gag was kind of slipping off of Keith's mouth. And he said, what do you think they're doing up there? And I said, oh, sounds like they're fighting. You know? And then he came downstairs and told Keith, he said, uh, Gino just told me where there's some money and some drugs. He said, so I'm going to tighten that gag up on you. Mm -hmm. We're going to leave. And um, so I, when he was tightening the gag up on Keith, I walked upstairs to see what was going on with Gino. Mm -hmm. cause he wasn't paying attention to me anyway. Mm -hmm. And I walked up there, and at first I didn't realize that Gino was dead. Right. You know? And um, I called his name and he didn't his fingers were twitching and i didn't realize he was dead right and i walked up and i pushed his shoulder and that's when i realized the um the ligature was around 
twined up in his hair and around his neck. Mm -hmm. And then I realized he was dead. But by the time I walked back downstairs, he'd already strangled. Um, the other guy. Yeah. Wow. So, and he made a phone call back to the other place mm -hmm. and called the other guy and told, I guess, I guess he told him what to do. I don't, mm -hmm. all I know is the other guy tried to um, stab everybody. Right. And one person died and two didn't. When all that went down, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you a question. If, if you were able to go back in time and see yourself before this whole thing went down, what would you have told yourself? I wouldn't have went in there. You would have been like, uh-uh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would have never agreed to even go do that. I would have said, nah, you better find someone else. I'm not going. Just so you know, we're at 14 minutes, so we're going to get the thing. Are you able to call back or no? Yeah, I can call back. All right, that would be good. My next question to you is going to be, do you have any advice for people who may be doing things that's going to, that can jam them up, put them inside the system, or put them in prison? Well, you know, the thing is, is number one, you have to realize that anybody that asks you... You have 60 seconds remaining. You have to realize that anybody that asks you to do something that could get you in trouble, they're not your friend. Because friends don't ask friends put themselves in a situation to get in trouble, mm -hmm. number one. And number two, with that in mind, if someone does ask you, then you know it's time to step back from that person. Just say no and, and go on, you know, because I'm fighting every day to try and get my freedom. Mm -hmm. I'm watching people who came in walk, who came in after me, and they're all walking out, and I'm still here. Yeah, I mean, I've actually talked to people that have seen people, and I don't want to bring up the fact that coming back to prison, but I've seen people that have told me they've seen people come get out and come back yeah. and get out again. Well, can you imagine how many times I've seen that? Mm-hmm. In 34 I, years, yeah. I, I've seen lifers that came in, even people with life. Thank you for listening to 15 Minutes With. I hope you've enjoyed this edition. If you have enjoyed this edition of 15 Minutes With, please hit the like and the subscribe button. You can also help me keep this show going and watch it get better by donating to paypal.me slash Joe Tommaso. That address again is paypal.me slash J-O-E-T-O-M-A-S-O. -E 15 Minutes With is constantly looking for new content to upload and new people to interview. If you would like to share your story or if there's someone you would like to see us interview, please email us at InsideTheRazorWire at gmail.com. That email address again is InsideTheRazorWire at gmail.com. Last but not least, again, if you like to support this channel, please subscribe and hit the like button. Until next time, we'll be seeing you 